Hello everyone, this is Danielle. So today's pick a card reading, we are doing an overall life card reading. I have it organized so that we're going to look at the energy you're in right now around relationships. So that will be friendship, partnership, as well as we're then going to be looking at energies around current career or studies that you are in. And then a third column, we're going to have energies around your daily life, what that's looking like right now. And hopefully by seeing those cards and those energies, you'll see if that pile resonates with you or not. And then the deeper breakdown of each of those categories is going to be looking at what are the challenges in each situation. What is the challenges that you're facing in relationship, in your current career or studies, and in your daily life? And then we're going to see how can you improve it? How can you change that energy so that you can bring in more love and fulfillment in each of those categories for yourself? The very last card we are going to be looking at the energy you can shift or transform into in the relationship career or daily life and we're going to pull a card for that just so you can see what there is to look forward to what you're striving towards why it's worth changing and making changes for today's clearing and healing we're going to be doing a group one at the end of the whole card reading so that will be in the timestamp if you're interested in that as always it's just an extra for you you do not have to take it if you do not want it just on a secondary note here i'm going to be giving away 11 free card readings with a distant reiki healing and then another check-in shorter like 30 minute card reading so essentially you're going to be getting two free card readings and a free reiki healing and all you have to do is go onto the link that will be attached in the description box for how to get a free reading and clearing and then just on that video, you just have to comment that you are wanting to participate in that contest or this offer. It is through that video link that you will have to essentially enter it. I just don't want to lose anyone who wants to enter it on other videos. So that's why I'm just going to say that the only way to enter it is through that video. So, okay, so that is what we're going to be looking at today. We have these three piles to choose from. We have pile one and there is a piece of pine on it. Pile two is this piece of lavender. Pile three is this piece of eucalyptus. All right, so if you know how to choose a pile, go ahead in the description box below and do so now. If you don't know, I'll give you a quick explanation on how to do it. So first you're gonna start by grounding yourself. We do this by taking four deep breaths. We picture white light above our heads and that we're breathing that white light in down through our noses all the way down through our bodies, all the way till the core, our center of our stomachs, whatever resonates with you, and then you release it slowly out your mouth. So how you see it is you're breathing in that higher source energy, it's clearing out your system, it's fueling you with life, and you're breathing it out slowly, anything that you don't need or is no longer serving you. And we do that about four times just so that you have a good cycle of breath happening and it doesn't feel forced and you don't feel more out of breath after doing it. The other option is, is you can put your feet flat on the floor and you can visualize the balls of your feet growing roots all the way down into Mother Earth. So visualize them growing down through the foundation, through the floor, 
down through the down through the dirt below you all the way down until it hits the center of Mother Earth. And then you should feel very firm on the ground after that. You should really feel in your body. And if you have another way of grounding yourself, please do that now. And then you are gonna, after that, look at the cards and then ask yourself the question, something along the lines of, is there a message for me in one of these piles? What is happening in my overall life right now? Which pile has a reading for me? Which pile has a message for me? Something along those lines. And then you look at each pile and you see if the, something about the card deck is catching your eye or drawing your attention, whether it's the plant on it or the actual imagery of the cards, there's no wrong way of doing that. It could just be something about where the deck is placed in the screen that you really like. There's no real wrong way of doing it. So if that still doesn't work for you, you can try looking at the numbers in the description box and see if the timestamp next to the pile, something about that number is resonating with you, is standing out to you. And if you've done that and you still don't feel called to a pile, it could just mean that this isn't a pick a card reading for you and to go ahead and find another one. And there'll for sure be one out there for you. And now that you're grounded, you should be able to find that pick a card reading just that much easier. All right, so you now have all the tools you need to choose your own pile. So I'm gonna let you do that now and I will see you in your card readings. pile one you chose this piece of pine okay we're just gonna pull the cards and then we are going to look at them because there's quite a few to pull so let's just get that over with take a look here so for relationship the energy you're in right now we have penguin authentic reach out to your tribe in times of need family gives you strength when you face the storm love your uniqueness you are full of surprises break free from others expectations just be yourself and then for the challenges coming through, we have letting go of urgency, surrender freedom from time constraints, and we have thought vibration, resonant choices, signature signals. What I'm seeing for what your energy and relationships is looking like is I'm seeing that you've been having a little bit of a hard time with feeling like you fit in and knowing where you belong. And I think this is in all your relationships. So not just in your family group. So if you could be a parent and it could be with your kids and your spouse, you might feel like you're different from them. They all have like the similar 
interests or it could even be that you're just like an adult child and you don't feel like you fit in with your family as well as trying to find friendships that have where they have a better understanding of you is the words that I want to use for this and what I mean by that is I think that some things occurred in your life and you feel different now it could have been an experience it could have been an awakening it could be that you're at the end of a cycle say you're just finishing school or you just finished a job or a study or something like that and I feel like now you're just trying to figure out where you essentially belong like what group of people do you belong to where do you fit in and I think when you've gone into situations you keep noticing everything that's different about you than from others and that's why I think the word authentic is really important and then truly realizing that everyone is a little bit different from everybody else and that's kind of what adds value to our relationships with others and how we add value to others and I'm seeing that you're trying to shift the way that you've been thinking but the challenge here is that you're very used to noticing what is different about you and I feel like it's had a negative effect in the past where you think oh I worry more than others or I'm not as confident as others I'm not as normal as others something along that has often been a thought in in your minds about just not belonging so you're really being called to focus on shifting it once you realize you have that and like I said this is coming up in the challenges so it's meaning that it's not the thing that's going to be very easy for you just to change like that. It's something that's going to take some conscious thought and effort and catching yourself on. But what I do get as a validation of better times coming your way for this is when I see the 19 and the 23 here, I see this as a start of a new cycle. And then this is the cycle that's coming in is going to be a lot more abundant a lot more prosperous for you and supportive and those are two great things to see coming in together so time restraints letting go of urgency surrender freedom from time constraints is i get the impression that this pile is used to being very busy and that's why i feel like you're coming to the end of something and I guess we'll see that when we get into the other cards here but I feel like you have changed your job or a study or a career something that had you very busy before that took up a lot of your time maybe you're done doing a certain hobby and now you just have almost all this time whatever it was that you identified so much with is now out of your life that now you're just trying to really figure out what to do where to go who are you who are your people and I think it's gonna be really almost changing who you've identified as for the last chunk of time it could have been your whole life it could be just the last few years but whatever you've done and whatever you've just finished doing it, it has really become your identity so I think this is really coming up to say to realize you don't need to be as busy as you are being <laughs> so maybe you find the need to pick up extra tasks to take on extra responsibilities to just constantly be doing things to keep yourself busy and I what I see is the challenge for you for the change in this area is slowing down is taking time just to see what do you actually want to do what do you get enjoyment out of what does this new you this authentic beautiful unique you want to do and really taking less focus on staying so busy that you don't have time to think about that to making time to to have time to ask yourself what makes me happy what do we want to do right now who 
who am I? What do I want to prioritize in my life? All those great questions. Okay, I'm just going to look at these other cards here and it's for how can you improve your situation or how can you find more joy right now? And we have these two cards here. Surrender obsessive thinking. If you're obsessing about a person or situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help bring you clarity or even solve the problem. Surrender to joy. A key to positive change in your life is to let joy in and savor it. Indulge in random acts of smiling during both the hard and easy times. Keep surrendering to more joy. Hmm. I really like that both these cards have that beautiful deep red in it. So how I see this, the suggestions for you on how to help with this is like I was saying, doing just small acts of kindness, realize what like almost trick your body into being happy. If you smile, if when you're noticing your, your pouting or you're, you're squinting your forehead, that can even help change your state, you change your focus. And I think that will help with this overall, I just feel like a lot of pressure on yourself. And I guess I didn't really expect this to come up in the relationships ones, but I feel like your relationship with you is where you're putting a lot of pressure. You're, you're trying to, honestly, you're just being very hard on yourself. You're wanting yourself to be the absolute best you can be, the perfect you can be, the one that everyone likes, but it's not giving yourself enough justice to just be happy and be you because that's what makes you great. That's what people love about you is you just being completely yourself. But I believe it's one of those old patterns that is coming up because it's, it's becoming ready to shift out of your life. Yeah, the more authentic you is coming through. So I really do see that if you're if you're having a hard time, if like those thoughts are getting the uh, the best of you about maybe what you're not doing good enough, what what you should be doing, if you said the right thing, how you said it, to just change your state, do something silly. Um, I feel like if you know play music in your car and dance around to it, sing a song, smile, change your physical body because that will distract you from what you were thinking about before. And I really do like that the red is there for the deep passion. And I just see this is a great time for you to really like tune back into that energy, to really feel that passionate energy you have for life, for the beautiful things, for just, I even think like you just like looking at things just because they're beautiful. And that's, one of the beauties of being alive in a physical body is that <laughs> there's just so much beautiful things <laughs> and it's okay if you find things beautiful that not everyone appreciates all the time. And the other message here is saying if you find yourself really having a hard time, if there's a lot of anxiety or worry or as it says here, obsessive thinking around a situation, a person, yourself, whatever it is, just take a few breaths, calm, calm down, and then release it to your guides in the universe and say, I trust that the best will happen for me and I give this conflict to the universe to resolve or to my guides to help me with or to God or whoever you believe in or whoever you work with because I feel like they're saying that this will take a huge weight off of you and I just actually see that if you can even just help yourself to get distracted from those sort of downward spirals in your head, that that will lead to a much happier, lighter feeling version of yourself. And don't get me wrong, I see that this is definitely going to be a challenge in some ways, but I just see that if you become very conscious of it, if you, it's almost like you need that shift where you realize that you are really great 
people really enjoy you, people want to be around you, and it's just this ego, this part of you, this lower self, who has this misconception of who they are and what you are and what you deserve and what is the ideal person, what is the perfect person, that's coming up. And to nurture that, that part of you is going to truly help with your overall quality of life because I think it's coming from how you were raised um, a parent or your peers, there was a lot of things in life that taught you that there is a certain way to be to be the best person, to be the most liked person, a good person, a popular person. And I feel like that's what you're battling right now is all these like unspoken learnt lessons from your youth. And it's gotten a little, it's kind of overridden your thoughts here it's kind of it might not always have been like this I think you were so busy before you had an identity and you knew where you were but now that this thing has ended or a new chapter has started for you the fear of not knowing what to identify with has essentially triggered this younger version of you to come up and defend you and that's where it's coming from is it thinks you need its help but the problem is is that it doesn't have a very healthy version <laughs> of doing it for you it thinks it's protecting you but it's actually just a wounded younger version of yourself <laughs> so as funny as it is you almost need to nurture that self and tell it like you are amazing you're you have such a unique way of seeing things that other people can't and it's so beautiful and brings so much more value to other people when they get to hear how you see things out through your eyes, that your passion and joy for life helps other people find new passions and joys for life. And that just, there's so much beauty in it, but it's just really needing you to nurture it and really acknowledge that that actually isn't you, that is just a part of you, this injured younger self that's coming up to protect you. It's, it thinks it's protecting you <laughs> and you can just essentially say don't worry I'm gonna take care of us now we are gonna be okay <laughs> that's the kind of energy that I see it needing and I think it will help with um I think it's gonna help with a lot of things I think it's gonna help with you realizing that once this fear is out of the way that you can really have have the ability to really see what you like to do to really see who are you like who is pile one who is what do, what makes them passionate what makes them excited what do they love to do are they adaptable can they grow and that's another thing I need to point out is I really get that this pile is adaptable but they just sort of forgot about it they haven't had to be so adaptable in a while and this is a reminder with the when see penguins <laughs> that you are adaptable. You can change roles and it might be a bit awkward at first, but you're going to come out of it stronger and a new evolved version of you. And then I see that this will help you kind of find your place in the world a bit more. So in family groups, it could be more harmony in your family systems. I always see in friendships, like in soul family groups coming in stronger because when you're proud and happy and standing up for just being your authentic self, soul family members seem to come in and sense that. So it's also a great way to track those in. So I just put the last card for the relationship energy. We have what will your energy look like once this has shifted or transformed? And I have to say it, <laughs> look at this amazing card for that. Otter spirit, you are never alone. And otters, anytime I see them, just means very supportive family systems. They're even in a shape of a heart. I, I feel like it's pretty universal that, you know, otters, when they sleep, they hang on to their family members so that they don't drift apart. It's really beautiful, sweet, endearing energy. And that's great to see because... 
whether it's family, soul family, or partnerships, better friendships, it's just saying once you've transformed this, once you've owned this, it's going to be quite beautiful energy. Super beautiful. I really want to make sure you all can see that card because it's truly so lovely. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really great to see that everything that I can perceive this pile wanting will come in and more at the end of all this. But you know what? I know this is something that we don't always like to hear, but from my experience, I've noticed when there's like the hardest times of transition and change and maybe even chaos is usually the phase we need so that we can transition into a higher, different thing the thing that we've been wanting, the thing that we're like, ah, I've been wanting this type of relationship in my life. And if we don't go through a change, we're never going to shift into something new. So chaos isn't always bad. Chaos sometimes is a step to f a step closer to finding what we've been wanting. <laughs> it's just like that um, middle ground we have to go through. So I do really like that for you all. Okay, so we are going to get into the career section now. And what do we have here? We have dear, love, be gentle with yourself. You heal with the power of love. See the light in all things. Acknowledge your self-worth and grace. Hmm. So every time I see dear, I do think of gentle souls, gentle energy, loving energy, very genuine energy. And the challenges right now in career it, or studies, I did say there could be both, is travel, changing location, journey guide. Hmm. So just from that relationship section of your life now looking at this i do think this really does validate or confirm as i was saying that if you were in studies i think they've ended or you've stopped them if you're in a career i think you finished work like whatever it was that you were working at you finished it i i think for maybe some of you it could be retirement but for most of you i think it was just uh, maybe a part-time job or a full-time job while you're finishing studies or it was just like a contract job that was only meant for a short amount of time and now that's over and it could have been for a 10-year thing, a five-year thing. There's all sorts of different energy coming here but the main thing is is that you've, you're transitioning. There's, it's almost like a very open field now and that can be very intimidating in the sense that there's so much possibility and us as humans usually like security. So I can see why that could be um, very overwhelming over here with the identity and wondering where to go, what to do, who are you <laughs> type of energy. Hmm. And then when I see this travel change in location, some of you could be an actual job transfer. Um, but then there's for other ones of you where it's literally saying you've finished this study, this job, and now it's time for you to go out there in the world and figure out what you want to do. And it might not be in the place that you are. It might not be even in the initial, what's the word I'm looking for? The initial field you were thinking would be. Like say you got a degree in something related to business and you always thought you thought you knew exactly what you were going to do for business school and then the job you're going to get you need a business degree for but it was nothing like what you had expected and it's just one of those amazing ways of when we know what we love to do what fulfills us and we're being true to ourselves somehow those kind of jobs just find us that I really do see that the main energy here is I don't get any stagnant energy around career. I get that the world really is open to you. Whatever you want to experience, it's there for you to experience. <laughs> if you want a job that you travel a lot in, it's going to be available to you. If you want to live in a city, there'll be a job there for you to find. If you want to live 
I want to for some reason say in like in a small oh, what is that called in the rainforest somewhere there's a job there for you if you want to live in Australia there's a job there for you as well there's definitely just like so much opportunity here and I keep getting that if you trust this is where the challenge I believe would be is is just trusting your inspired ideas they're not going to be ideas that you can necessarily know why you feel so called to do them but what I get here is that they're divinely inspired they're divinely being given to you that these these will work out for you but you're having to the challenges as in fighting that logical brain side that worry that I even think for some of you it's like leaving the old behind is a hard part if you have I don't want to want to use the words dependence but maybe you're very close with a parent and you feel like they might need you and you would be far away or there could be a significant other or a friend and they always you just feel like you might be leaving someone behind and worry about leaving people behind there's a bit of that energy as well but i just see that it's so important for you to go on your own journey essentially and do what you're feeling inspired to do <laughs> yeah definitely a big message there so it is very interesting to read as i was saying like there feels like there's a lot of new abundance coming in a lot of excitement coming in but i get that you've just come through the end of something like this is a tricky place to be in because there is so many options that like I said I feel like there could be a bit of a feeling of overwhelm and the message from <laughs> this card is just a need to slow down remind yourself what are you excited about what are you passionate about and that will help you tune in more to what you're wanting and to trust this divine guidance because it's there what fulfills you and to not let other people's judgments and beliefs on what's best for you to sorry my battery died there already so i was just saying it's really important to not let other people's advice or fears is what i'm getting be put on you about what you should do or where you should go that is definitely a message also coming through from your guides for you there and I also have to say, if you have a hard time getting things done right now, if procrastination is a really big struggle for you right now, this is another message to work specifically with dear spirit and just ask for their help and being gentle with yourself, slowing down, setting up boundaries for yourself and realigning you with what fulfills you, what drives you, what makes you happy. And that might be a weird advice, but I think procrastination might be a really big issue for this pile right now. I don't know if it always was, but it's something that you're experiencing now. And I imagine you're feeling frustrated because with all those time constraints coming up for you in that other pile, it's really important <laughs> to slow down and it should actually help with the procrastination. It's kind of counterintuitive really, but something to think about it was coming up here for you all um yeah it does feel actually really good i can see why it maybe career would feel a little confusing but the energy that you have around this feels really good like you're gonna end up doing some really satisfying and fulfilling work in your life for sure there's no doubt here i just see that it's so like some people work a job so they can make enough money to do what they love but for this pile i feel like the job that you do will make enough money and you'll love it <laughs> so it's gonna be a win-win it's going to be something you're pretty passionate about and even allows you to do all the things you love so whether that's included in the actual work or where it takes you is part of what you love doing it's going to be interconnected somehow Okay, so I am just have the other card here for how can you change or improve the situation with the careers and studies. 
in your life and it says surrender to trust trust yourself and your decisions don't be swayed by other people's strong opinions about what to do take action and be confident that you have chosen the right path wow that's really cool that's essentially what i was saying i hope i well if i didn't clarify it there you go right there where it was just saying that you are definitely getting these ideas and they're very divinely guided I get that from the purple, I get that from just the imagery here, but then the number 22 just on top of it all really cements that that's like three different things going on saying that you are being divinely guided on what to do with work and studies and to trust that. But then yes, when I see the yellow, I was seeing other people's judgments coming in and trying to dissuade you, but the purple is so strong, your intuition, your guidance is so much stronger than what other people's fears have to say to you so that was neat to see that that there was a bit of a push pull but ultimately your your guidance is so strong that it's just going to be a thing to not to remember not to take but it it won't over override what you truly know is right for you so then the other thing i want to talk about here is yeah so about it saying not to take people's fears and opinions as the right thing for you because they're not you you're an authentic unique beautiful human being and you know what's best for you and just also another card confirming to be confident in who you are and know that you're making the best decisions for you you're exactly where you're supposed to be and any difficulties that are here it's just because when difficulties arise it means there's a change coming and when we look at it that way it feels more like a good confirmation versus this unfortunate thing happening to us yeah so how to do that trust yourself <laughs> trust yourself and your intuition that will help ease your way through this and finding out what's best for you what's right for you Okay, so we already actually, the way less cards came out for the career section, but we have now for the energy that this can shift or transform into um, after all this, and we have for you <laughs> brown bear spirit, and it says take time out. I actually really like this card. I don't know if I've ever had the bear card come out in this deck before. I really like it though. How I see this bear is the deer energy was really gentle and kind and delicate and it is beautiful, but I could see that maybe it was like a younger version. Like, um, I don't want to say naive because it's not that it's naive, but other people would see this gentle energy and they would maybe bulldoze over it out of lack of respect and you know some people can just be that way <laughs> and then how I see how this energy transforms itself is this confident not going to be messed with a uh, strong individual that's how I see it turning into knowing what's right being a fierce warrior for justice I actually want to say I'm not really sure what the career is that you're heading towards but I feel like it actually is going to improve people's lives to I don't know I keep getting the word stand up for people and I'm not too sure how that relates for everyone here but it definitely is a really cool energy to see it's very much like if people have pushed you over in your life or people have taken advantage of your kindness I get that you're gonna make sure that doesn't happen to other people you're gonna be the the tough one who helps defend them Yeah, definitely a message around knowing the lay of the land, <laughs> knowing how things work and knowing uh, essentially how to stand up for yourself and others the best that you can. So that's also a nice, really beautiful energy to have that come in. So that's where you're heading towards. If you're wondering why all this stuff, why trust what and why the goal is that at the end of it, you're going to be one tough tough, strong, confident individual. Yeah, and I should get, they don't get mean here. I just get 
a great boundary setter. And basically if someone is like giving you some bullshit, you just don't take it. You, you can just call them out on it and say, that's not what's happening here. This is what's happening. I almost get like a little bit of like um, human rights vibes here. <laughs> if someone here is like looking into law or have come out of law, I really get a strong energy around that. Uh, human rights, uh, just justice overall, lobbyist groups kind of energy. Could even be animal rights. Uh, environmentalism. Yeah, there's just like having a really fulfilling cause and standing up for it kind of energy. I really like it. Okay. Um, daily life. So for the overall life, we have uh, the coyote. Cards actually come up a lot when I use this deck. Uh, I guess you guys like the coyote card. Don't take things too seriously. Make time to play. Great wisdom comes from laughing at your own folly. Look out for the traps and tricks of life and learn from them. So daily life, you're feeling like the coyote. <laughs> so the energy that I get here, I'm kind of picking up the energy that you feel like life is playing a big joke on you. <laughs> I don't know all the details around it, but I almost feel like you feel like you're like the butt of a bad joke. Maybe you have had a stunt of bad luck lately. I almost could see some of you tripping on things. Normally you don't trip on things. Maybe you just, yeah, just feel like you have a weird bad luck thing going on. Something around that, but... Hmm. Oh, let's pull one more card just to get a bit more clarity on that. I feel like a bitterness. So let's see what is, what's going on there. Sensitivity and strength. Tapping the forces within. Hmm. Okay, interesting. The other thing I'm getting is like dead weight. I don't know what that means. Maybe it means something to you all. Let's see here. Hmm. So I think what I'm getting from this is that maybe having a hard time feeling very motivated lately as well. Feeling heavy physically. Maybe that's what they mean by the dead weight. I don't think it, it's very interesting. Um, what do they mean by that? I think the another message that's coming through here is I almost see this card as feeling like you have to, I don't know if it's fight to be seen, fight to be heard, fight to be valued, something around that energy and feeling like you have to be very rigid and very strong and very, like, I don't know, maybe making your point is the right word, but how I see that is it's saying that there's like great strength and I feel like being gentler is like the word I'm hearing. It's very, Kind of contradictory it's almost like saying that you are at your strongest you're stronger when you're compassionate and gentle with others people hear you best when you come from that energy and when you're coming from that place but there's just like a lot of like anger and frustration lately and you know what i th i think that could be that little girl you coming out um like i said it's not it's like that when we were over here in the relationship power, I said there's like this younger girl and she's so tough on you and she might even be tough on other people, but it's just like this defense coming up and I'm not sure what's happening in the daily life here, but I get that the challenge for you right now is in essentially being gentle with others, gentle with yourself for sure and compassionate with others. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out, I'm not getting, I've got a huge wall here, I feel like, with this card. Um, 
honestly, like how I'd see it is I think you're almost just done with taking people's shit <laughs> is how I see it. And you've been taking it for a long time and I think you're just done. You're just done is kind of the words I get. And it's you're frustrated and angry that people do some of the things they do, that people are like, I would almost say maybe like bullying people. And it's actually saying like the best way to, the challenge in this is having more compassion for those people actually gets through to them. Because as frustrating as it is, when we're just like mean back or aggressive back at certain people, they'll just fight us harder. And they're saying to actually get through to these people and to change them requires like this angelic touch, this gentleness that they have never experienced. And that is like very healing for them. Like that actually changes things around them, changes things within them. Yeah, not an easy thing to do. I'm also trying to figure out why this is, is so much in your daily life. <laughs> Uh, let's see, sometimes we just need more cars. It says, be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. So dolphins usually mean teamwork and intellect. higher consciousness. So I almost feel like it's saying transformation. <sighs> so interesting because this is daily life, but I'm feeling like something that you're struggling with right now is believing in the goodness of humanity is maybe the, the words I was looking for believing that there's more good out there than bad and seeing the good over like this i want to say like the slimy people the scams the um the way that people can use people it might be something that you've been struggling with and then how they want you to how they want to help you get out of this energy which would not be something that'd be easy to unsee because when we can, when we start seeing that stuff, we start to see it everywhere. But how I'm seeing it is, is we really want you to believe in the power of miracles, the power of change, the power of compassion and being seen that can have on people. And how I almost see it is understanding that everyone in the world is trying to be good and people who are bad actually are, think that they're just being good. And I know that seems really crazy to see or hear and be like, what? That's not possible. But I think a lot of people think they are just being good. They're just taking care of their needs. They're helping out their own families and they lose sight of others and the impact of others by being compassionate and kind to them i just keep saying that you can really radiate change within them so if you're coming across a lot of energy like that they're saying <laughs> you can create change and that is the challenge you're not maybe feeling like they deserve it but it's always through love that the greatest changes can happen like the all total acceptance Yeah, I'm having a little hard time reading this last one here. So hopefully this is making sense to you all. Because I'm getting a little stumbled on it. There's a few different things happening there. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we're just going to look at the energy that it's going to transform into or shift into th through this phase. And we have skunk spirit and it says know your worth and it's number 54 so when skunk spirit comes out it really shows or indicates that 
you're in a place where you're so okay with being who you are and you and you have so much that you're proud of yourself for you're being your best self you can be and you know your worth and it's almost like saying that when people see you you have a reputation that 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 is already good but when they see you and meet you and are around you it just raises it even higher like they didn't believe people could be as good as you so it really goes it's very very much different from the energy I was getting over here it was a little confusing for me <laughs> don't take things too seriously make time to play yeah with the coyote with almost like being a bit angry and frustrated and upset uh, and seeing kind of the bad is kind of the energy I saw seeing like the lower stuff seeing the things that are not good really transforms to this skunk spirit which is very about seeing the best knowing value being the best they can be because they just want to be a brighter light in the world energy so it's very different very different from the other energy and does feel very good so in a lot of ways this is like quite a strong cards all to be ending on with all of having a lot of confidence all of them being very okay with being themselves being their true selves and being strong and firm in who they are without being any less loving gentle compassionate and kind so that's also another common theme between all of these cards here yeah a lot about being your authentic self in this card reading so that's definitely a pretty big lesson for you all right now in pile one be your authentic self. And you know what? I actually was meaning to explain the spiritual meaning of pine and maybe why you might have chose it before you all go here. So it has a few different meanings depending on which culture you want to take it from. But overall, it means like a long, prosperous life, a hopeful new beginnings, a hopeful future, rebirth, renewal, shifting in times, which is maybe all the things that this pile needs to hear because every aspect is definitely going through a change, which might make it feel very hard right now, but in the long run is going to shift you into the person that you're wanting to be into the having the i'd actually even see like just self-growth overall because you even want to be a different person in your relationships you want to be a different person in your career you want to be strong and confident and powerful and able to help others out and then in the daily life being compassionate bringing more joy to people's lives and just see that all that is going to come from this overall transformation so very beautiful cards. Lots of change for you all coming up. Definitely lots of change. Okay, I am not positive what we're gonna do just yet for the clearing and healing, but I will post it at the end of this whole card reading, so go ahead and look into that if you like. Hopefully by the time I get to pile three, I'll have a better idea of what we'll be doing <laughs> okay you all have a good one um yeah great day great week best of luck with everything sorry about this last pile i was just getting so stumped i feel like there's a really big wall up with it and i felt like i wasn't communicating it in the best way so i figured you know what it's better just to leave it where it was and hope that it resonated with you made sense somewhere and if not just leave what doesn't resonate here on the youtube so you all have a good one and i'll see some of you in the clearings hello pile two so you all chose this piece of lavender so we do have a few cards to pull from so what I'm gonna do is just pull all of them first and then 
we'll get into reading them. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to do that now. So. first for you pile two for the energy you're in right now towards relationship whether it's friendship partnership or family and you actually got two cards first one to get two cards so we have cosmic egg and turtle I actually do really like these cards together though show this one too so this is the challenges of the energy that you would be in right now so freedom moving on and letting go Sorry, some cat's hairs there what I see happening here in the relationship area of your lives is the completion of a circle essentially that when these two cards come out together it's this one here is talking about how the relation this is where I have to say it could be that you have a child leaving going to university or going to study abroad something like that or it could be relationship wise a divorce or the end of a relationship and how I see it is that it's I don't want this card to seem bad in any way because it's actually a very beautiful card. It essentially has this energy to it that this journey has come to its end and there was so much growth. There was love, there was adventure, there was change, there was transformation and ultimately all like all the things were beautiful at some point in this relationship and maybe the whole relationship was beautiful but now it's it's grown as much as it can it's gone as far as it could and now it's time for it to essentially bring on a new cycle so i could see this being that a relationship that just you felt like you were growing apart or you're headed in different directions that so would be very aligned with this type of energy i really get that there would be like a love there but just not wanting the same things anymore or like i said if it is like the child moving away or growing further it's really calling for you to let go of the relationship you used to have and let it now become something different because this child now is older this child now is learning to grow and be their own individual and it's just the cycle of life and it's beautiful in that way and when they come back they will have so much to teach you because the next card here turtle is all about going on your own adventures and bringing an adventure to your life again <laughs> What that look like is tr starting something different, moving somewhere new, taking on a new project that truly changes the way you see things. It grows you. It makes you evolve, learn new skills. So whether that's just doing a very new job, learning a new skill, learning a new language, taking on a new passion project, moving to a different country. There's so many possibilities here, but they all have the same energy of just this amazing adventure where you'll have so many stories to tell. You'll, you're having your own tale to share with others and it, ex it inspires others. That is the commonality. It doesn't matter what it is that you're moving on with, but it does have the same effect on everyone and it's really neat to see because 
It's like a very beautiful stage of life where there is grief in some ways for this end of a cycle and the beauty and the love and the amazing experiences within it. But then there's just so much excitement and possibility and unlimited options in this turtle card. Is that, I actually think it's really amazing to see these two cards together. I hope you're feeling the same way. <laughs> but I can see the challenge here, it says, is in moving on and letting go. And I do get that. That's why I feel like I, there's definitely some people here where it's a child moving away or moving out, starting something new, and there'll be distance, and you're having a hard time letting that go because... Well, it's a child and you love them and you want to protect them and all that. But there's going to be so much new for you with that child leaving. It's going to be like a new focus on your life, on who are you? What are you other than a parent, a mother or a father? And it just really feels really cool, like a rediscovery of self. And then for those of you where it's a relationship, same thing. It's, it's very like, it's like bittersweet. There was, you could be comfortable, you could just keep doing and being in this relationship if you wanted, but there's so much of a beautiful, amazing world out there that you're really wanting to experience. And this partner who just doesn't have the same love and passion for the things that you do, also has their own adventure to go down. Or if they just even love, I feel like they love just staying the same for most of you, that partner that you're leaving or that you have left, something around that, that they are just happy and content with security and not, not changing. But you, I see, are like this beautiful dove. You're just not meant to be caged. You're not meant to be restricted to one thing. You, you want to see the world. You want to experience it all. You want to, you just want to change. That's the main thing. You want to grow. You want to transform. You want to become an even better, bigger, more knowledgeable version of yourself yet. And I get that you have done a lot of growth in your life already to this date, but you just like to have more. There's no limit for you. You don't think that one can ever stop growing, which is also not a really beautiful energy to see. And that's why I really see that although this is a struggle to let go of it, there's so much beautiful energy coming in that as the card reader looking in, I can't see this as a loss. I just can't. There's so much amazing energy just surrounding you. It's just waiting for you to really let go. <laughs> really let go. And it's always easier said than done. But I just keep saying that. Like, your stories are going to be amazing. People are going to love to hear whatever it is that you venture off and find yourself doing. It's going to be really, really cool. Um... Yeah, I really like the energy to this one. It's very positive. It's very inspirational. It's very growth. It feels very... Maybe the word I'm trying to use, it feels very abundant. <laughs> the energy feels very abundant and positive. Okay, so we have the other card here, and it is for how can you change or improve this, like the challenge that you're having? And it says... So, la, la, surrender resentments and it's an umbrella and it's kind of a blurry image but it's a bunch of red flowers and it says holding on to the resentments only poisons you try to forgive others for their shortcomings and keep moving forward towards positive situations in your life so that's how to help with this this is probably some really good advice. I feel like this is really calling on you to not find yourself reliving the past a lot, past events. And I know that's easier said than done, but it's saying if you're finding yourself being like, well, feeling resentful or bitter towards their past actions and say maybe this is just a total random um, example, but say if you're divorcing someone or breaking up with someone and now they have another partner and they seem amazing and they're doing all the things that they didn't do for you the message coming through for that is that let go of resentments because they couldn't be that person for you you taught them how to be that person for others but they weren't able to be that person for you that you needed them to be 
and it was because of you that now they can be that, but they couldn't be that for you because it just wasn't in the relationship dynamic. And it's saying to not find yourself thinking about things like that, to not feeling stuck on things like that, and to just <laughs> forgive yourself for having the feelings around that, for for wanting that. You're so allowed to want that, but instead of being focused on what you didn't get, focus on how you're gonna get it this next time, how this turtle energy is gonna go off into the world and have so many amazing experiences that that little thing, that thing that seems so big, is not even gonna be, it's gonna feel like nothing because of all the abundance this turtle's gonna experience and bring in. So it's always trying to say, shift your mindset to not what you didn't get because now what's coming in is gonna be 10 times better. It's gonna be so much better and focus on the love you want to experience, the excitement. I feel like personal growth is so big for this pile, like just the excitement of growing and being able to have that with a partner and with friends uh, and for yourself. Yeah, I feel like some of you could also have been uh, single parents or something like that. Some of you might have had a kid leave to university and <laughs> gotten divorced or broken up, which is a lot. So I can see why that would be a lot going on. But I do really have to reiterate that I see beautiful things coming your way. That yes, although it's hard for change to happen, we need a little bit of chaos. We need a little bit of a shift so that we can get the thing we want that is better. So why don't we just go ahead and look at the card for the energy that this is shifting or transforming into. And we have whale spirit, trust the great mystery. I actually really like this one with the turtle card. 65. I don't, I've never gotten this um, card yet from this deck before. Super beautiful. I think of this as honestly finding your, I just feel like higher conscious clan. <laughs> I don't know, I think of whales and I think of them as packed animals, loving, supportive, gentle, and I don't know why I wanna say generous, but I see that too, and great communicators super great communicators and that might be something that you were lacking in some of these relationships is people who can really communicate clearly who see the beauty in situations who have a positive outlet i see all that kind of energy coming your way and you even being in that energy yourself being a better communicator communicating what you see and have it come out in a very positive and healing way for others yeah, I'm not sure what you all do for work. I guess we're gonna find out soon, but I feel like you really do like bringing more love and light into the world and helping other people feel seen and respected and appreciated. So I really see a lot of that coming out from you. Yeah, just in the relationships already, I feel like you guys are just on such an exciting path right now. I really love this turtle. I almost don't even want to cover him up. He's so nice. Yeah, looking really good in the relationship direction. I don't know if you all have been feeling like that, but as the card reader looking in, the energy feels really good. Like it's shifting into some very, very good energy. Just really, really saying that in relationships, whatever you want to experience, whatever you're wanting, in your life will come um, will come to be. It's very manifesting base card. Trust the great mystery. And I, I think that's why they're really saying it's important that you focus on the energy you want to experience in future, because in a sense, you're gonna be manifesting that in for your future soul family, friends, partnerships, all of that. You're gonna be manifesting in that kind of energy to have around you. So. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get this really beautiful support system around you. And I do think partner, I'm sorry if you're not uh, 
stoked to hear that. But I definitely get that like a really, really good partnership was gonna come through for this pile in the end. After you go on your adventures, after your experience, what you need to experience, it feels just very divine timely, very good very much you are in control of what you want to manifest in energy. I really, like I keep saying, I really like the energy for relationships. Okay, anyway, so for a career, we have Butterfly, another transformation card. You are all about growing. That is so clear <laughs> to me, all about growth. And the sh challenges of this for you right now is beneath the surface hidden truths, something unknown, and this picture of an iceberg with a bigger piece of it underneath. Very pretty card. So it seems like there is a lot of change going on for this pile. I can't help but think that all the change going on in the personal relationships is going to start coming out in the career. So sometimes the butterfly I see it as opportunity and transformation. So with career, it's very interesting. There's a couple different things going on here. I think either a really good opportunity is gonna to come to you at work or it might already be there and you're not seeing the whole picture. And I almost feel like it was just because you had a lot of other things going on that you're not clearly seeing it. Or there could be something here around... You know what? I don't get a bad energy from this iceberg. That's what's confusing me. Um... Yeah, I actually think this is gonna be more positive and there's going to be a lot of change at work, but there is actually a great opportunity in it for you. And the best way to go through this, so the challenge for it is going to be being okay with it not being clear what the end result's gonna be. But I just keep getting a good energy here. Like it's, I'm gonna say this, I think for some of you, you might be fearful that you might lose your job or something like that. But what I keep getting though, is that there's no sense in stressing over this because it's a great opportunity. Whatever it is that's coming towards you is actually really good. It's gonna be great. But you can't see the whole picture right now. What they're saying is the challenge for you is to trust your intuition and just keep going about your day, about your work as you always have, because it's just gonna, it's going to happen either way, but I keep getting, it's gonna be for the best. It's all, it feels so positive to me. It feels very positive. <laughs> um, but it is saying, if you are having hard times with change and you, just with the relationship changing a lot and maybe career, a new boss, or maybe a new project that's a new customer or something that is a little hard to um, figure out because it's just very different from normal. It says create some small routines in your day so that you can feel secure somewhere in your life. So if you really like going to the gym, just make sure you go to the gym every day or not every day, but say however many times you like going a week. Or if you really enjoy a meditation practice, make sure you're always making time for it. So if it's just five minutes some days and some days you like it to be 20 minutes or an hour, just make sure that you're consistently giving yourself even those five minutes for that meditation. Establish some routine that brings you joy, that makes you feel secure and grounded and do that every day. So that even though there's all these other things that are changing a lot, and like I said, I get really good energy from them all, but change can feel chaotic if we're not used to it, right? If we've been very secure and something has been very stable and consistent, it can feel a bit overwhelming. And I feel like with work, you might be feeling like that. So they're just saying, find a routine and don't worry about it. I actually get that just being exactly how you are will be the best outcome because 
you at your truest form, I get that this pile has a lot of wisdom. They're very good at what they do. They care about what they do. They care about the quality of what they do. And that just already alone tells me that however this works out, it's all going to be the best opportunity for you. Yeah, I just keep saying that you can't see the whole picture, but it's it's going to be good. <laughs> it's all going to be good. It's just going to be new and different. So how to help you through this energy we have surrender to creativity let your imagination soar stay open to all creative ideas about how to pursue a dream or solve a problem so for this one i don't know if you could see but there's actually more butter butterflies in this card they are, if we can get the right lighting, they're just right there. And another thing that I like about this, it really tells me to transform the way you're seeing yourself. Transform how you used to identify yourself with, which really goes good with this last relationship card that we were reading, as it really says that you're gonna go on a whole new adventure. You're gonna reestablish your identity. You're gonna figure out who is this new version of you. You're gonna have all these great stories and taking this energy and rewriting your story. Who are you? And showing that back to the world. And it's, I just keep getting a lot of inspiration. Whatever it is you do, you're gonna inspire a lot of people. And I like the creativity because I really see this as being, I don't know, you're going to be, like I keep getting the words prosperous, you're going to have a lot of great ideas coming your way. You're going to almost wonder where they're coming from, but it's just this new energy around you right now. It's really good. It's very abundant. It's very prosperous. And bringing that into your career is going to be really amazing. But like I said, it's all about saying you're going to change how you see yourself and who you put out there to the world. So if you've previously identified as someone who doesn't do a certain thing, maybe ask yourself, do you want to be a person who does that thing? Say, are you a person who travels? Are you a person who's open-minded? Are you a creative, artistic human being? What are you? Who do you want to be? And then embracing that if that's what you want to be and then bringing that into your work yeah i hope that makes sense to you all about how that looks um but i just get that pretty much this is going to change in the relationships and it's going to change everything it's going to change all aspects of your life but i'm not sure if you heard me say this but it says let your imagination soar stay open to all creative ideas about how to pursue a dream or solve a problem yeah, so it's going to be really good. I think it's going to help you start to see that there isn't just two options. There isn't just, I have to do this or that. There's always like a few other options, but sometimes our brains can get really stuck on, it's just this or that. There's no compromise. There's no in between. But I think you're going to start seeing that there is. <laughs> there is more options than you think. Okay, so how this energy will shift and transform or look in the end in career, and we have Coyote Spirit. Trust in divine detours. <laughs> so that's really great with like trust in divine detours, and then seeing that over here you're learning to accept that you can't fully see the bigger picture, you can't understand everything that's happening, but if you just trust in it, then it will get you to where you need to go an opportunity is coming your way that's for your best and then here it says basically that that you're going to learn to accept that you're going to learn to embrace it and know that it all works out for your best it's all working for you it's all here to help you essentially so i actually really like that and seeing how everything is interconnected. That's a really big one. So maybe something that feels like a setback in the moment actually is what brings in the most abundance to you. So here's an example. Say you, your car gets hit, <clears throat> gets hit in a car accident and you're very upset because obviously that's a very stressful situation, but then it turns out that you get full coverage for it 
and you don't know this because you didn't have the insight, but say your car was about to break down and if it broke down, you would have gotten nothing for it. But the universe almost helped you out there by getting you in an accident so that you could get a full settlement. And it's kind of like one of those things where we don't always know why some things happen, but it turns out it was for our best. It actually worked out for our abundance. And it, although it feels like a detour in chaos, it actually was for the best. The other thing that I get from this is being okay with failing because when we fail, we learn a lot and we come back harder and we'll, we will succeed the next time. That could be a message for some of you as well, is not seeing failure as an end all be all, you have to give up, but as a teacher and an opportunity to know how to do something even better the next time. Okay, so we are actually just gonna look at the last one here for your daily life. And the first card we have for it is, look at that. <laughs> you have a whale card again. That's so cool. Whale, two whales. I've never gotten a whale before in an animal deck and now I have two in one card reading. That's pretty cool. A very marine biology spirits here. <laughs> yeah, but however I should say this whale has a very different energy than this whale over here. Do you think it does have a similar energy as the relationship one? The energy that this well gives off is about emotional depth. And how I see it is, almost feels like this whale's a little bit tired and with everything that's going on, it makes sense that this whale would be a little bit tired. And I think that's why maybe in your day-to-day -day life, you're feeling a little more lower energy than normal but I get that overall you're still very, very productive, very strong. I feel like sometimes you can slip into a bit of that, I don't know if resentment's the right word exactly, but I would say like into the older stories, like that old identity, the old ways of things. And then it can turn around, I feel like, and you can have so much compassion for those same people for, people in general. So it kind of is telling me that you're just needing a little more balance in the daily life with this energy here, because I think that it can go kind of from like that tired, um, just a little, up, I don't know if upset's the right word or disheartened by past stories. And then it can turn around to like this super passionate, compassionate human <laughs> who, wants to help the world, has a lot of wisdom, has understands, lots of, is it empathy? Yeah, I think it's empathy, like truly an understanding for people's suffering. And I can see how that could be a little bit tricky. It's like a fluctuating circle. Um, so we're just gonna look at the challenges that we got, um, challenges of the situation right now. And we have justice, harmony, and solutions. And I like, for this card, if you can see, it has a balance thing in it. So it really reiterates to me that it's just needing to be a little more balanced out this energy. Maybe we can do something for that in the clearing and healing for you all. Um, and then Angel of the Seven Chakras, Power, Truth, Connection. Okay, so this actually does reaffirm a few things here. I think just with all this change that you've undergone, all this stuff happening, uh, like I said, it's kind of a little bit like that bit of chaos that we need for things to transform. I think the routine that they're talking about in career here, establishing just something you do every day. And I really would like it if it's like a good healthy thing. So not necessarily drinking a coffee every day because caffeine isn't great. You know, it kind of makes us more anxious. But if it was to drink like a herbal tea you really like, or if there's a comfort drink that makes your body feel good, or meditation, or an exercise you like to do, or maybe you, you call a friend or go for a walk, whatever it is to establish that routine, I think that's really gonna help with the daily life and feeling more balanced. 
and I almost seem like harmonize like that energy you're in because it can instead of it going up and down so much we really wanted to get it at like a healthy balanced version and when I see this here I think it's also just saying that um it just needs like a realignment essentially all the chakras just need to be a little realigned and balanced out because a lot of change has happened and it's just needing a little help with that so if you I actually <laughs> This is where I'm going to say the meditation thing would be really good. If you did a daily meditation, find like one on YouTube for like five or 10 minutes. I feel like for you, you there's a bit of a time um, constraint here for some of you. Um, not feeling like you have the time to always do that every day. That's why I think it's important to establish like a five or 10 minute thing. And if you have more time a certain day, it'd be amazing to go more than that. But to do that, to establish balance. So do a guided meditation about visualizing all of your chakras and like an energy flowing down through them all and balancing them. I don't want to hear opening or closing anything in these guided meditations that you choose. We just want to choose something that says balancing because what I get is happening is that you don't have one that is closed all the time or one that is op like too open all the time. I think what happens is just depending on the day or the circumstance, some of them are underactive and then other ones are overactive. And I think it's like they're almost convulsive. Ah, convulsive isn't the right word. It's very normal. You can just see like they're wobbly. Like they can be um, very small and then all of a sudden they go too big and then they exert themselves and they have to become small again. But I think they're all doing that. And you can see how that would feel like chaotic. Like there's just all these different energies doing different things. So they could just use a little help in remembering what it's like to be in balance. And that's why I think it'd be amazing if you could do this for yourself and really tell your, your chakras, your body essentially, that this is what it's like to be aligned. We are gonna align all of you. We're balancing all our chakras out. We are safe. We are at peace. Change is growth. <laughs> And it might seem really silly to say that, but I think your body's almost wanting that reassurance from yourself around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, if, if that would interest you, I would really strongly recommend that because I think it's so powerful when we do these things for ourselves. Um, but that being said, maybe in the end clearing though, we will just do a chakra reconnection and balancing just so you can see how easy it is. And then we do one every day, even guided. Honestly, guided is great if we have a hard time focusing on things because they'll make sure they mention everything you need mentioned. <laughs> okay, so we have two cards here for how can you improve or transform this energy and the challenges that you might be having. And we have surrender obsessive thinking. If you're obsessing about a person or a situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help bring you clarity or even solve the problem. And then more marine animals here. We have surrender to miracles. Be open to miracles occurring in, occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. Okay, so this card here makes me think a little bit of a reminder on manifestation that good and great things can always happen to you. You just need to make sure you're focusing on what you want to bring in. And the importance of that is that if, we, if we're like vibrating on a frequency of being in the past, of not wanting to experience that, of not this, not that, then the universe doesn't always hear the not. And it's like you're feeling that emotion. That's emotion I want to bring to you. And just in my experience, I would say that the emotion we put behind what we're trying to manifest in is what has the most power. It could be different for other people. This is just my experience that I would say that the emotion is so powerful. So that's why they always say to do gratitude, journaling, to put yourself in a state where you feel happy and thankful because you want to bring in more energy like that. And the best way to do that is to put yourself, even though at first it might feel forceful into those states so that you can have more of that 
in the long run and more that you feel even more grateful for versus what you're just trying to find things to be grateful for so this is a really good card i think for reminding you that you can bring in whatever you want and you're deserving of whatever experience you want a miracle greatness a hard to believe opportunity is possible for you to experience and it's out there for you and then the obsessive thinking card I think this is just going back to sometimes getting stuck on the past or on these situations and the I'm gonna keep saying the word like chaos the change the things you don't quite understand and understanding that it's all happening for a reason and then there is gonna be a great opportunity for you through it and just staying consistent with who you are and trusting your intuition. That's actually a huge message. There's been so many purple cards here. <laughs> when I say purple, it means that you have good intuition. You're just needing to remember to trust it because it will not lead you astray when you trust the intuition and not the fearful thoughts that your ego is creating. So it's a challenge, <laughs> but it is what your body is wanting. Yeah, I should also say through meditation, you're gonna find a lot of things easier. You're gonna find it a lot easier to connect with that intuition, just know what feels right for you, to see better solutions to problems, to have more creative solutions to problems. And that seems really beneficial for this pile. You really, that keeps coming up, benefit, like creative thinking, creative options, seeing around what seems like a black and white problem. Okay, so the energy that this pile is going to tra shift or transform into after all this, we have snake spirit. And it says time to heal. And it's number 55. Very different from the whale spirit. <laughs> the fairy. Oof. So Time to heal is really saying, I really think it's saying that you're gonna master self-care, self-healing, um, creating time and more balance within yourself and feeling more stable within yourself. Like I think even emotionally, energetically, like your energy levels are gonna feel more stable and not so fluctuating. As I said, like that whale at the start of this card felt like it could really be blue <laughs> like in the sense that it could really feel low sometimes and then other times it could feel like there's so much passion and love for the world and then it's just like really hard to go through those waves of emotions sorry i realize i'm saying all these things that sound like puns they're all water related but uh, maybe it's because of all the whales um yeah but i really see this as coming out of this with nourishing yourself and understanding how to meet your own needs and being able to hold space for yourself and realign yourself and give it the nourishment that it needs. And that it, that you've maybe not had in the past that you're really needing to bring into your life or catch up on. I feel like in the, in the relationship area, there was a lot of nourishment for others and care for others that this is really a good time for you to focus that, that nurturing, that nurturing of side of you on yourself and really acknowledge how much you have changed and overcome things because snakes always mean transformation which means that overcoming all this there's a lot of transformation right there is a butterfly transformation um, there's a lot of support systems so without a doubt there's going to seem like a lot of chaos because there's just so much change but what i keep getting back to is they're saying is just establishing that routine that thing you do for yourself every day that consistent solid thing <laughs> that you can control which would be i think really should be a form of meditation um just for a few different things here one for connecting yourself more with that intuition the other one was for that realigning your chakras and reminding them what it's like to be healthy and balanced and that's really going to help energy levels mood consistent moods um trusting yourself feeling empowered it's going to be really good I, overall and it's going to be reconnecting with yourself which is always powerful in itself yeah it's gonna 
it's going to be a very interesting time for you all. Or it is a very interesting time for you all. This is definitely something that is present tense for you whenever you see this. Okay, I think that's all I have for you. If you would like to receive a clearing or a healing, feel free to go to the end of this card reading, the very end of it, and receive that. Like I said, it is always just an extra for you all. You do not have to take it. Um, yeah, it's just something I want to put out there for people if they're feeling like they want to leave a card reading, feeling a, like an energetical change or a, a shift within themselves, just to help support that momentum for you all. If not, I would recommend just go onto YouTube and type in a guided 10 minute chakra balancing meditation or grounding meditation because and make sure it just has all the chakras in it and it talks about some kind of energy going down what we're looking for is a universal universal energy that source energy to come down from your head and just clear and realign and balance all the chakras together so you would ideally see one where yeah, that was happening, and then any extra energy, anything that no longer serves you is being released and transmuted back down to Mother Earth. <laughs> Something around those lines, but do what feels right to you, for you, of course. Okay, that's all I've got for you all, so I will either see you in the clearing or I'll see you in a week. <laughs>
how I see it is you might have put a lot of weight on the actual verbal communication, but it might be important just to actually observe what's going on with the person you're conversing with, what physically is happening, what um, what is their face saying? What is their body saying? And asking more curious questions around that. More open and broader questions, I think is really important here. Because I think you're gonna find out a lot of things that you normally wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Keep trying to think. The freedom card. Okay, Dulles. I just keep seeing that this is gonna help you go deeper in relationships with others than maybe you previously have. I almost feel like there might have been an accidental prejudice or judgment placed on things, like an expectation. And I think just changing the way you communicate will change the the relationships you have and your impression of those relationships that you've had. I just keep <laughs> thinking that you're going to learn a lot from people that you never knew. You might find out that they're passionate about things that you didn't know they were passionate about. They might be more open-minded than you had originally perceived. And I just keep getting deeper connections. And then with this chakra card, I think um, this is the second time this one's come up in this reading. So I'm thinking we are going to do just a rebalancing of chakras and making sure they're all working together and in alignment <laughs> for the end clearing and healing. But what I see here is I think there might just be a little bit of a block in the throat chakra. And that's coming from feeling like you can say a lot, but people aren't really hearing you or just overall people not hearing you either it's because you're feeling like you have to talk more or you don't talk as much because you feel like people aren't hearing you or misinterpreting what you're saying there's definitely a block in there somewhere so we're going to take a look at that for you all i want to look at another card here though just on how this could improve okay surrender fear let go of the fearful stories you are telling yourself. Stay in the moment, focus on solutions, and celebrate every baby step forward. Okay, yeah, so that does really cement that there's just like this true discomfort with, I would say, like, um, just in communication, like awkward silences, I feel like feel intolerable or just, just so uncomfortable for this pile. If there's something where something said and you feel like it was misinterpreted, then you might even panic and have to make sure you clarify everything. And a lot of this is coming from fear of around judgments, what they're thinking of you, what you're thinking of them. It's just kind of like this ball of like, I guess fear or anxiety or something like that. <laughs> and it's really saying, the ch like the the challenge here is gonna be letting go of the fear and the judgment. I feel like you might not realize it and but it's essentially like you're interpreting and you're putting a story to what's going on, like why is there an awkward silence? You're putting a story to it. It's awkward because they thought this about what I said or they thought that about what I said and this is really calling for you to take a step back Stop creating the stories. If you notice you're making assumptions, that's when you have to pause. Stay in the moment and just ask simplified questions to get more answers because I have the suspicion that for this pile, a lot of these um, stories that come up aren't at all what's going on, um, that they're really coming from a fearful place uh, around, I think it's like acceptance and communication in and being like saying the right thing and being the right person or something around that. So 
it's definitely a bit of a block coming up. I feel like it's a big stress on you all. And how it would be affecting a relationship, yeah, is just maybe not going as deep as they could. And it would be from the fact that you thought they meant something totally different than what they meant. And I get this as an overall thing. I don't get this from a certain relationship. I think this is in all your relationships, more or less, that you're experiencing this. So it could be in family relationship, friendships, and in partnerships. You might have a habit of assuming some stories, <laughs> which is totally human, but it's coming up because it's starting to really affect those relationships. So the energy that you can shift or transform these relationships into so that it's not coming from this communication block says brown bear take time out and this is great because he is blue which is our communication chakra and it's kind of reiterating that one says speak less take a time out i really like this i think how this energy is going to transform is it seems like a calmer bear like someone who's calm and able to hold space and just hear all of what someone has to say before speaking. That like quiet, wise person, if you can visualize that in your head where someone can just say whatever they need to be said and the person, so you in this case, will be able to hear it and come from a heart-centered space, not a judgment place, not a fear-based place, um, from a heart-centered place and just really hear what they're saying and what they mean and that's actually a very powerful place to come from it's going to really clear up a lot of miscommunications yeah so what i get from now is that where it's coming from is more of the solar plexus space where there's some fear and some anxiety and worry coming up but once it shifts from your energy being focused on the heart and coming out of a place of compassion understanding it's it's gonna really transform the relationships overall definitely much stronger stronger relationships because that's really beautiful that's what it's going to tr that's what it's working on transforming into so if you're wondering why it seems so hard sometimes we need to face that right like if we don't create change then we can't transform into anything so it's really it is a beautiful thing to see coming forward because it means you're going to come and become this amazing strong space holder this strong communicator this strong person to have people be able to really felt heard and seen it's pretty cool okay so for the overall life for career overall I'm sorry for the overall for career we have the energy of beaver productiveness that's a pretty good one for career hey uh go ahead and just do it how cool so <laughs> let's look at the challenges my suspicion is is coming from an energy of procrastination and going into just getting the job done doing the best you can do and being like a reliable stable worker and the challenge for that is Emotional desert, inactivity, <laughs> isolation. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. There's a lot of solar plexus um, stuff coming through for you guys so far. Definitely in the relationships now and here. So it tells me that you're very, um, you think a lot. You're very thinky. That's what I would say. <laughs> you think about what other people might be thinking about something. You think about what other people might expect or you know, there's just a lot of things that you think about. <laughs> and how that can be coming up is, I would say when I see that procrastination is very common because if we're spending so much time worrying, thinking about all these other things, it's really hard to feel motivated in the moment to go and get the things done that we need. So... It's very interesting because you I feel like for all the other cards, when I would read this card, this is the energy you have, but I actually feel like this is the energy you're struggling to be in, to get the job done, get to work, be this like resourceful, reliable worker that you really want to be. You want to do a good job, but you are struggling with 
feeling inspired to do it, feeling happy about it. Definitely a lot around. There's just a lack of passion around it. You're kind of daydreaming a lot. <laughs> a lot of other things you'd rather be doing, um, which doesn't help with that energy. So why don't we just go ahead and ask what you can do to help change that or improve that. Okay, because I feel like you already know that. So it says surrender to your soul's path. It's also kind of a yellow card. Okay, it says your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson and every moment. That's cool. So it's saying, although there might be other things you'd rather do and you'd rather be doing and maybe it's not the funnest thing and you're not like crazy passionate about it, it's saying there's so much for you to learn in what you're doing right now. You your soul chose this path because there's something there it wants you to learn yet and you might be so focused on i like i said this thing you're not doing right now instead <laughs> that it's saying to try to broaden the horizon try to shift your perspective because there's actually a lot of abundance there there's a lot of great prosperous things a lot of lessons to learn and i just keep saying a lot of abundant opportunities so that could be a big thing for you all. If you're feeling really hard time feeling excited about being there and doing that work, you might not be seeing all the amazing opportunities that are opening up for you by being in this job. That there is a lot of things going on on top of that. And that's why your soul wanted this opportunity, wanted to be a part of this. So like I said, this is definitely the challenge is overcoming that lack of excitement that lack of desire for it but once you can get past that you can see i just see immense opportunity it's so luscious <laughs> so much luscious opportunity so much potential and then if you can see that it should be able to help you feeling inspired feeling productive feeling like there is a reason to be excited that there is real purpose in the work that you're doing that it's creating connections with co-workers with other people with other people that opportunities might be opening up with you there's a lot about connection here and a big message is coming through saying that you have a longing to really get this all done i keep getting that the beaver wants to be a good beaver <laughs> but the desert though is just meaning that it just can't seem to be coming in you're just really struggling with with actually finding the energy to do it then the enthusiasm the enthusiasm the satisfaction in doing it so a big message here is just remembering that you have the ability to create a lot of abundance and opportunity in this and although you're having a hard time seeing it right now if <laughs> we don't usually like talking about we want you to be in the in the now but look to the future and see the abundance and prosper pros prosperity <laughs> there we go that it can bring in and know that it's coming your way and where you are right now might not seem super exciting but it's going to be so abundant and so many great things are going to come from you being exactly where you are right now you have the ability to create and be productive and do all this good because it's not for nothing i think that's the fear is that there's this is all for nothing it's a waste of time but it's not it's actually leading you to the abundance and the opportunities and the connection with others that you've been really wanting so it is part of the manifestation. That is a pretty big message here. There is a manifestation. It is part of it. So the energy that this is going to transform into or is going to shift into if you get if you choose to get past this is the wolf spirit. You have a lot of warrior spirit animals coming through here. So turn knowledge into wisdom. And he feels a lot more strong and sure-footed than the beaver. <laughs> the beaver feels like someone who really wants to try and be good, where the wolf feels like someone who is a leader, who is a valued member and a key player in their 
in their clan, in their group. And that's really cool to see that you can shift from wanting to be that to being that energy, that person in your job, in your career. And I really see this as being able to see the end goal, having that foresight, being able to see how this all leads to what you're wanting in the end. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. I don't know, I really get that just between these two end cards that you're really gonna transform into like this strong, confident, I keep getting like warrior energy. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to be fighting, but just I feel like strong, confident in who you are, ready to embrace the unknown, that kind of energy. It's really, really strong. It's a really cool energy to see. And it's very opposite of the energy that you're currently in. So it's that's even more cool to see because it's so transformative. Okay, so for daily life right now, we have squirrel and it is preparation. Get ready for big changes. So there we go. That just beautifully sums up what we're just saying. Like going from a beaver who's trying to an actual wolf who is doing. And then we had the koala trying to like nervously communicate what it was trying to communicate and worried about what it might say or not say right to this like strong bear who is independent. <laughs> uh, definitely kind of energy that you're getting ready to transition into. So daily life is squirrel and the challenges around that is spirit mentors, teachers, talents and guides and we have phase entanglement, emotional influence. Okay, yeah. So what I would see here is actually you trying to work on developing yourself daily. Uh, there's new skills you've been trying to learn. I'm not totally sure what they are. It's gonna vary for everyone. But we're doing things for personal growth, personal enhancement. And I, what I see is what you might be struggling with right now during this phase is your own inner voice doubting you. So emotional influence and there's like these people gossiping, but I don't think it's other people. I think it's yourself. All these little voices in your very active solar plexus is saying like, oh, that's not true. You can't do that. You're not good enough. Oh, this person might be thinking this. There's just like a lot of, um, kind of get like negative energy there. And the challenge here is going to be learning to ignore it and be like, no, that's not true. Essentially setting boundaries with that ego voice of yours, with that overactive warrior voice within you and trusting in your gifts that you're learning. And what I see is that you actually have some really great role models coming in and mentors. So it might not be someone you're actively working with. It might just be people around you are really great examples of what you want to be and who you want to be and the emotional, uh, sorry, the, the emotional stability you want to have. But also I think they might just have a lot of wisdom themselves. They really are good at whatever it is that they do. <laughs> and that is going to help you see that it's possible for yourself and know why you want that for yourself. It's gonna help inspire you. Those are the words I was looking for. But yeah, I do see the challenge is honestly that solar plexus, that over worrier <laughs> within you. And it's not that you can't overcome it. I definitely don't get that. But you just have to be very aware of when it's coming up and when it's influencing your thoughts and when it's not actually the information being given to you so meaning in conversations whether it's career relationship daily life that you're making sure that you realize did this person say that or did my judgment get placed on it and it's a pretty advanced lesson to learn so don't worry if you're not always getting it perfect but it's just really calling on you to distinguish the difference between these two so that you can 
transform into these very strong energies. These aren't easy things to get to. So it's not gonna be a piece of cake <laughs> getting there. It won't just be like, oh, I'll just figure it out and it'll be easy. It's really calling for you to, to be aware of that, to be constantly present with that. Okay, so the card that we have for what can you do to improve or shift this energy? We have surrender to creativity and it says, let your imagination soar. Stay open to all creative ideas about how to pursue a dream or solve a problem. I really like that. So that's remembering that there is always another option out there. There's always another way and What I like about this is I think is this going to help other people around you, like th through you being able to do this, like creatively solve problems or have creative solutions to say issues at work or in scheduling or things like that, is that you're going to open up the eyes of other people around you to see that things don't have to just be this way or that way that there is like another answer sometimes there's a there's an open discussion around things and i see that <laughs> you're gonna have to like embody that a little bit more but others are gonna start picking that up around you and it'll be something that people admire about you in the end um yeah and once again i keep getting drawn to the wheat in this card which just really makes me think <laughs> a couple of things that you're headed for a lot of prosperous times. Um, wheat is supposed to be s such a beautiful symbol for abundance and good and plentiful times. So it really cements that like with this career card saying like there's so much abundance and opportunity here. It's just needing the shifting of your view of it. Um, I see that in this card too. There's so much abundance around you. It's crazy. It's, it's, amazing really <laughs> that there's so much for you out there there's so much for you so much the universe is trying to provide for you and gifting you with and it's really just having to make sure that you're seeing it because if you just think there's only two ways there's a yes or a no or this is bad or good you're not going to see that you're standing in a field of abundance <laughs> because you're just looking straight ahead <laughs> so that's actually a really cool card to see come through lots of goodness around you lots of good stuff we just have to get out of our own way sometimes to really see it okay so the energy you can shift or transform all of this into is parrot spirit watch your words so i guess you got another one around communication and what i see around this I'm really gonna say, say I really see this once again is just being very intentful and curious on the words you choose and how you word things being very aware of how words can create their own stories and create their own judgments and reactions within people and you can't be accountable for all of that but I think what all this is gonna learn like between this um, inner like gossip or I don't know if it's the right word but these inner worries and stories kind of trying to manipulate what you're thinking and <laughs> seeing how other people are great role models and seeing that there's more than one way or two options to do things I think it's really going to help you realize the power of the words you use, what words to not use, what words are really good at just communicating curiosity and asking for more insight. Uh, I also like that this parrot's wearing a crown, so I almost want to say like becoming like the king of communication, which is totally the opposite of what we have going on at the start of all this. So definitely a huge time of transformation for you all. And you know what? I just really thought. I should actually talk a little bit about what the meaning of eucalyptus is before some of you go here. And just in case all this is feeling 
a little bit overwhelming or anything, but eucalyptus also symbolizes abundance. <laughs> Just so you all know, abundance. So even though all this might feel like some stuff that isn't fun to deal with, it's just saying like there's so much abundance out there. All these things that seem frustrating or inconvenient or not ideal, there's so much abundance in the opportunities around them. There's so much good coming in there. It also is a symbol of protection and strength, which is also what's reiterated in most of these here with the bear that, like I kept saying, the warrior spirit, very strong, very protective. It's just, I don't know, it's so good. It's so good with everything that you have going on here. So I wanna make sure that all you know that. So if maybe you've been feeling called to um, maybe use eucalyptus essential oils and stuff, it could be a good reminder that you are in an abundant time. It's, it's, the world is working for you. <laughs> the universe is bringing in all the opportunities that you're wanting. And even though sometimes it doesn't seem like it, they are there for you. Okay. All right, so that is all I have for you all. If you would like to receive uh, the clearing slash healing, you can go ahead and just keep watching for a few seconds and we'll just shift right into it. If not, I will see you in a week or so. You all have a good one. If you are interested in entering for that free card reading slash distant Reiki, uh, go to the link in the description box and you'll get all the instructions there. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got for you all. So have a good one. Okay, hello everyone. We are into the clearing and healing section. So today we're just going to do a chakra clearing and just really making sure they're all aligned with each other and working in harmony. That came up in a couple of the piles so that's pretty much why I decided to do that one. <laughs> okay so I thought it'd be fun to first check the energy with the pendulum and if you have a pendulum I would recommend grabbing it and checking it for yourself just to see if you can see the difference. So I just thought that'd be kind of a fun thing to offer. So we're gonna see, please show me the pile one's energy. Please show me pile one's energy right now. Okay, so not bad. Just small, pretty fast small circles. Actually, the interesting thing here is that they it goes from slow to fast, slow to fast, so that's Kind of interesting to see so that one could still be better yet like i said if it's not going in a counterclockwise direction if it's not completely stagnant you're still doing good it's just we always want to be the best energy we can be so that's always our goal okay so please show me the energy for pile two please show me the energy for pile two Okay, it is moving a little bit, pretty small circle. So we're definitely gonna clear that one. That one could definitely be a lot better. Clear, release, clear, release, clear, release. And lastly, okay, please show me the energy for pile three. Please show me the energy for pile three. Okay. Mm, so that one looks pretty similar to pile one. Not quite as fast. Pile one was really interesting. It was almost like speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slows down. Okay, so cool. Now that we saw what the energies are like, hopefully you've checked your own energy and just asked for your pendulums to show you what it looks like. We are going to do the clearing and the healing and essentially just a chakra realignment and we're going to hope to see that these circles are much bigger for each pile if not i guess we're just going to have to go back in and <laughs> clear it some more so we're going to all start by grounding ourselves as always even if you've done it at the start of the card reading i really ask that you do it again 
just because you got a lot of information, if you have a lot of emotions coming up, it's best just to reground yourself, recenter yourself, so you can best receive this. So I'm gonna take four deep breaths. Okay, we're going to start now. So I call upon and invoke to step forward the highest form of source energy, which is love, to step into this clearing and any guardian angels, the archangels, and any other guides, all in the energy of love and light for the highest good of all involved, to please step forward now and assist in this collective clearing. I ask that the collective is surrounded in peaceful, loving energy during this clearing that I remain a neutral, unbiased channel for the highest form of love, source energy. On behalf of the Kajas reading viewers today, I ask that your spiritual team applies this clearing for you now or whenever you hear this, that this be done by the highest vibrational divine energy. I ask that the guides working with you now are aligned, upgraded, and able to support you through this clearing and afterwards on your new path. I ask that the guides that are by your side now are of the highest vibration, wisdom, and love to best bring in this clearing for you today. I ask that these guides channel in the wisdom and understanding of universal truth, the knowledge and remembrance of love and light into your energetic and physical bodies. I ask that this be done, and so it is. So I ask that all the guides now please place each person into a pillar of white light. And I ask in this pillar of white light that the energy please start by entering through the crown chakra and clearing out anything that is not of the highest energy, clearing out anything that is stagnant, that is no longer needed, that is no longer serving them. And I ask that everything be returned to a high vibration, that everything shift and move and return to its highest state. I ask now that this energy moves down to the third eye chakra and the ear chakras, and that it clears out any words, anything that was said that is no longer serving each individual, that is not of the highest form of love and light. Please be removed now. And I ask that all the energy that is left be shifted and be moving again in the highest vibration, all in love and light, and for the highest good of each individual. I ask now that the crown chakra, the ear chakras, and the third eye chakra be connected and balanced that they're turned in harmony and in communication with each other. I ask now that this light go down from the crown, from the ear chakras, from the third eye, down into the throat chakra. And I ask that anything that is not of the highest good and love and light be removed now that any stagnant energy be transformed or transmuted and released if it is no longer of the highest good in love and light for each individual. I ask that any energy now that is left there vibrates at the highest 
frequency of love and light. And that it is reconnected with the third eye, with the ear chakras, and with the crown. And it moves once again in balance and in harmony with each other. Now once that is done, I ask that the energy continues down into the heart chakra and that it spends some time there and releases any tension, any tightness, any stiffness within the shoulders and the chest and the upper back, that all that be released now and replaced with this new healing, loving source energy that anything that is stagnant be transmuted or transformed back into the highest vibrational energy of love. That anything that cannot be transmuted be released and returned back to Mother Earth. I ask that this energy of the heart chakra now be reconnected with the throat chakra, the third eye and the ear chakras and the crown and that they all be returned to balance, harmony and communication with each other, all in the highest form of love and light. I ask that it be done now and so it is. I ask now that this energy be brought down to the solar, solar plexus chakra and that anything that is old, stagnant, no longer of the highest vibrational energy to please be removed, released, or transmuted now. That anything that cannot be transmuted please be returned to Mother Earth. And I ask that this energy now is returned to the highest frequency and vibration of love and light for the highest good of each individual. All in love and light. I ask that this be returned to a balanced, harmonious energy level. I ask that it now be returned to connection, harmony, and balance with the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye, the ear chakras, and the crown. And so it is. I ask that this energy now move down to the sacral chakra, that any energy that is stagnant that is inactive, that is not vibrating at the highest frequency, please be transmuted, transformed, or returned to Mother Earth. I ask now that any energy there be returned to the highest form of love and light source energy. All in the highest good and love and light for each individual. I ask now that this sacral chakra be reconnected to the solar chakra, to the heart chakra, to the throat chakra, to the third eye, to the ear chakras, and to the crown, that they all be balanced with each other in communication and working in harmony. I ask that this be done now and so it is. Now I ask that the energy go down to the root chakra. I ask that any stagnant energy, anything not in the highest frequency of love and light, please be removed, transformed, transmuted, or returned to Mother Earth that any energies left please be returned to the highest form or the highest frequency of love and light energy for the highest good of each individual involved. I ask 
ask that in this root chakra we place the remembrance and the knowledge of the downloaded truth of love and light down to that root chakra, knowing that it is safe to be and that they are supported. Now I ask once again that the root chakra be balanced and reconnected to the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, the ear chakras, and the crown chakra. I ask that they all be balanced in communication with each other and working in harmony. Now I ask, lastly for <laughs> this energy now to go all the way down into our earth chakra at the bottoms of our feet. I ask that it be cleared of any stagnant energy, any blocks, anything that cannot be transmuted, please be returned to mother earth. As this be done now, and that the energy there be returned to the highest form of source love energy. And that this, the, our earth chakra, please be aligned and balanced and working in harmony with our root chakra, our sacral chakra, the solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, the ear chakras, and the crown. I ask that they all work together in harmony and balance and be in communication with each other. So I thank all our guides for working with us and making sure that we are grounded and in connection and balanced throughout all our energy systems. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so like I said, this is always things that you can do for yourself, but I just know sometimes we don't do things for ourselves, so that's why I'm incorporating these in the readings, and we're just going to check your energies now. So please show me the energy, oops, sorry, tangled it a bit, okay, please show me the energy of pile one. Please show me the energy of pile one after this clearing and healing. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the, cir the circle it's making is bigger than it was at the start. And hopefully you can see that it's a little more consistent where before it would go really big and then really small. Oh. Here comes Toby. Toby. He wants to chase it. <laughs> He's been really going after this lavender. Okay. Sorry. Of course, a cat had to make it into at least one part of this reading. <laughs> so, feeling good about pile one. Pile two. Please show me the energy of pile two after this clearing and healing. Please show me the energy of pile two after this clearing and healing. Okay, so that one also seems bigger and better. Oh boy, sorry, we're gonna have another cat come in. You're doing so good, Tobes. You're doing so good. Just going along, okay? All right, and pile three. <sighs> Clear release. Clear release. Pile three. Please show me the energy of pile three after this clearing and healing. Please show me the energy of pile three after this clearing and healing. Okay. Think that one's bigger too? I almost have to rewatch them. <laughs> I remember thinking all of them were pretty small circles, so I think this is a lot better now. Definitely a lot better now. <laughs> um, yeah, but hopefully you check your own energy with your pendulum after this if you have one, just to see if 
it benefited you a lot, a little, or whatever. It's just kind of fun to see that come through. And it's just a further confirmation if these clearings are benefiting you or not. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave this. If you would like to enter for uh, the two free card readings and a distant Reiki session, feel free to do that through the video link in the description box. If not, I will catch you all around. Best of luck with your weeks, your days. I hope they're all great. Bye.